God, and defining an alcoholic is really hard. You know, everybody has knocks in their life, but it just, it depends on how the person reacts to them. See, because the feelings are all the same. Hurt feelings, uh, sorrow, you know, anything. We drank over anything. Break a shoelace. Break a shoelace, let's go get loaded. Well, I think you should show what alcohol can do, the harm it does cause. Show it without preaching, without showing the drunk on Skid Row and all that. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Oh, you hit that dude, man. That dude was flying. I know. I hit him so hard in the mouth, I, I thought I was going to break all my knuckles. <laughs> we had guns. We had shotguns. We had everything, man. I went down there, man. And they had grass. Weed. What's grass? What's weed? Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. You should let the kids that have been through the drugs and the alcohol tell the story. Not some big authority laying out the facts about how bad it all is. Kids are more out to listen to somebody their own age or a little bit older. Even then, some aren't going to listen. What? We're all innocent, right? right. It's our right. right. yeah. Well, most people, not only kids, but adults too, don't think there are 15 and 16-year-old alcoholics. <laughs> to identify with someone else in some way but uh, it's it's uh, things like people get up to the and talk about insane things you know and people laugh and when they're laughing they're not laughing at you they're laughing with you in identification you know oh yeah I did that I used to throw up every morning too you know and uh, they talk about the porcelain altar the toilet, you know, every morning getting up and puking, you know, and, and yeah, you know, yeah, I used to do that and we'll laugh. I'm an alcoholic. Today I don't drink at all. I've been clean now without a drink for over a year. <laughs> Once we stole a bottle of whiskey. Well, we thought it'd be fun. So we took and drank down that whiskey between the two of us. We just had a great time. And we'd walk through the neighborhood, down the side streets. We'd laugh and run around, causing trouble. It was just fun to get out of myself. I continued on for for a couple of years I drank. Then I got into drugs.
When I was younger, I was really popular in school. It seemed like I had everything. I must have thought I was some sort of superstar or something. Back east, I was in sports, and I was popular with the girls. I came here. I couldn't handle it out here. The girls, they were different. I didn't have the attention. I came here, and in the ninth grade, I... I don't know. I got pimples. My biggest hang-up was girls. <laughs> I just couldn't talk to them. The group I hung out with drank a lot. So I started drinking, too. I liked it. I drank, took pills, did anything just to be with them. Just to feel a part of something. <laughs> person and when I drank I could talk <laughs> I'm 17 now and I began drinking when I was 13 I went to a New Year's Eve party and I went with this guy and I hadn't really gone with guys before that and the whole time at the party it was so uncomfortable I was so scared and all the people were older, and I didn't know them. And they were all drinking. And somebody gave me a beer. And I drank it. And I just got so drunk. And I was getting with all the guys and talking to everyone, having all the girls get mad at me. But I really liked that, when the guys would talk to me. And I felt good. I wasn't scared anymore. Like, uh, I remember, right off the bat, some guy in junior high school hit me right in the eye. Now, uh, it was about, oh, two weeks after I got into that school, so I couldn't hit him back. And right in front of everybody, I cried. Now, I, I couldn't live that down. That and a whole lot of other things. What I was, was a, was a coward. So I try to wash it down with everything I could get into my system. And I just went into this gigantic bag where I wouldn't let anybody in to see what I was really like. My stepfather was a heavy drinker. My mom used to always tell him, why don't you go to Alcoholics Anonymous? He'd say, I don't need it. As a little girl, I would find wine bottles hidden all over the house. My mother would pour them out, and he'd beat her up. And they'd come and take him to jail, and let him out the next day, and he'd come right back and beat her up again. My real father was an alcoholic, too. He used to go to his bars and spend all the money. He was always in a bar. He'd take me in there, too. I liked it there, because being a little girl, I got a lot of attention. Like I got turned on to alcohol. It made me feel better, all right. But my grades went. I didn't care. I'd always wanted the attention. When I got drunk, I was 
was around a lot of girls. And I got kicked out of school. And I really began to withdraw. I... I don't know. I don't know. I, I just never really got back up again after that. My girlfriend and I would go shoplifting in the stores because my mom didn't make that much money and I hadn't had any new clothes since grammar school. We just went in stores and went crazy and walked out with a brand new wardrobe. We ran around in parking lots and stole things out of cars. Once we found a fifth for bourbon and we kept it in my closet. So every day my girlfriend would come over and, and drink and we would shoplift and raid cars. I got sent to a foster home, a girl's home. All because my mom couldn't handle me. I just on, kept on getting in trouble, running away, stealing. I never got in trouble for drugs or alcohol, but I got in trouble for what they would make me do. A lot of teenagers think just because they're young, they can't be alcoholics. I didn't want to think of it as a disease at first. I considered alcohol a joke. When I was young, I thought I had a pretty good idea of what alcoholism was. The poor man's high. Right off the bat, I seemed to find the worst guys in school. I guess because being bad was easy. I found that with alcohol, it was easy for me to be tough. Because nothing scared me. Sometimes I'd be loaded and somebody would be talking about me or just looking at me. I'd walk over and hit him in the mouth. And after a while, I started to take money, wherever I could get it. And stereotypes and traded it in for drugs and liquor. And I grew into this image where I was just trash and nothing really mattered anyway. I remember that day, about three o'clock, I went over to some friend's house. This girl started making margaritas. So I had one, and a second one, and a third one. And somebody decided to go to the beach, and so we all went. And by that time, I was feeling really sick. So I broke away by myself and went up to the water. I remember vomiting. It was really bad. My life was, was dying. I felt like nothing mattered. I'd get loaded. I was shooting speed, a lot of speed, taking downers, and drinking wine all the time. I was all right, I thought, as long as I got loaded. When I'd come down, the whole world would just start crashing in around me. People would tell me, you better quit getting loaded. You can't handle it. And I said, I can handle getting loaded. I just can't handle coming down. I didn't realize that I was already addicted. I don't know. Got busted for under the influence a couple times. It seemed like I, I could always wheel myself out of the situation. All that time, I never really considered giving up drugs or alcohol. Except... <laughs> I was about 16, and I just got my girlfriend pregnant. I felt like, like, when are you going to stop? 
Like drugs were, they were there, but I was looking for something else in life. It seemed like all at once it would all come down on me. Like I'd come down and go through convulsions and end up sitting on a bunk wondering what the hell had happened. I know it all came from me, but I always found a way to blame it on somebody else. Like I was shut off. It was like a fear and distrust of people. You understand that? For that reason, we're going to book you. Did I enjoy what I was doing? No. I didn't know any other way. I didn't know what was going on. Except where I was going to get my next bottle or pill. Where you got me? Drunk driver. Okay, go ahead and put your weapon up and we'll run him over to the breathalyzer ring. Okay. Hey, Reeve, what happened to you? Hmm? Where'd you pick him up? Come on around this way. Faction in Louisa. Okay. Come on. What's his name? Daryl Johnson. My so-called close friends. Half would be in jail. They were all going down the same drain with me. There we go. Okay, you want to start filling out the checklist there? Okay, Daryl. Daryl, mm. I want you to blow in this mouthpiece as hard as you can until I tell you to stop, okay? All right. Here you go. Now, blow into it as hard as you can. Harder. Blow a little harder, Daryl. Okay. That's good. All right. All right, Daryl. According to the state of California, anything above 0 0.10 blood alcohol is considered to be under the influence. Your results is a 0.18. For that reason, we're going to book you for driving under the influence of an alcoholic beverage. Okay, Darren, put both hands on the wall, step back, spread your feet apart. I was so far into my own thing that I didn't know what was going on. I was actually shutting myself off from what was happening. I didn't know what other people were like. Yet I was aware that they were living differently. But I never paid any attention to them. Okay, just relax, Daryl. Really, when I stop to think about it. I never thought about anything really. The image of being a man getting drunk and busted. There were six of us in the car. We we're drinking. found these two dudes who were, were fair game for hassle.
It just happened. I'd been drinking, and I got a bag full of reds. I just sat down and kept taking them. And I remember just sitting there, looking at somebody in the fireplace. I didn't even know I was trying to kill myself. And I woke up in the hospital. I tried to clean up by myself. I couldn't do it. There was no way to go. I didn't know what to do with myself. You can't do it alone. You need people. It was the group the self-help group that I finally ended up in. These people would hug me. And these people looked like they were happy. Well, I need people that I can trust in. I never had that even before I started drinking. Duh. These are my friends. I can talk to them and trust them. In the meeting, somebody would get up and say something stupid like they had been afraid of girls. But nobody reacted and said, hey, look at him. Instead, they said, hey, stick around. It'll get better. I've been clean, sober for one year. You know, I've, I've got friends, real friends, whereas before they weren't real friends, the friends that I had on the streets. No way. No way. I couldn't have done it by myself. The whole thing is when you're hurting inside, because that's where it starts. When you're hurting inside, when you feel lonely, talk to someone about it. You know, don't hold it inside and say, well, nobody understands, because how are you going to know unless you get down and rap with someone about it? But you ought to be the person doing it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying?